Hello everyone. Our discussion in today's video presentation is all about vectors. The discussion will focus on the definition of vector, how the direction of a vector is described, and how to present the force in vectorial form or notation. And then on the later part of this video presentation, a sample problem is presented that will support your understanding about the topic. Let's start with the definition of a vector. How do we define a vector? A vector is a mathematical quantity that possesses both magnitude and direction which add according to parallelogram law. Any mathematical quantity that possesses both the magnitude and directions are considered to be a vector. A good and a very common example that we use and we know a vector is, is a force. Because a force is a quantity that both have magnitude and direction. What else? We can also, also consider uh, velocity, acceleration, as some of the example of a vector. Vector has direction. And how do we describe the direction? So let us have here the definition of a unit vector. A unit vector is defined as a vector of unit magnitude in a specified direction. Meaning, it is a vector whose magnitude is equal to 1 and specify a specific direction. Normally, a unit vector is denoted by placing a circumflex over it. Let us imagine that we have here a space represented by x, y, and play, x, y, and z axis. The direction of the positive x axis can be denoted or is denoted by a unit vector herein represented by a unit vector i, while the direction of the positive y axis shall be denoted by a unit vector using j, and that the direction of the positive z axis is denoted by a unit vector k. Now, assuming that on this space we have a point A, so that on this point there lies a vector having a magnitude f sub m. The direction of this force can be described by a unit vector m, so that if we will multiply that unit vector by a scalar quantity, then that will denote a vector having the direction of a unit vector and the magnitude equal to that of the scalar quantity equal to f sub m. For example, if m or if f sub m is multiplied by n, then this means this means that the vector has a magnitude of f sub m and directed in the direction of n. As indicated in the figure, you have the vector whose direction is n and has a magnitude equal to f sub m. How do we represent a force in vector notation of vectorial form? In order to represent a force in vector notation, the magnitude of the vector is multiplied by the direction expressed as a unit vector. For example, let f be a vector having a magnitude equal to f sub m and is directed through any direction represented by a unit vector n. Then the force is represented in vectorial form as the product of f sub m multiplied by n. 
Let us have this illustration. Let us imagine that this is the direction described by the unit vector n. And on this direction, there is a vector having a magnitude of f sub m. Then, the vector f is now represented in vector form as the product of f sub m and that of the direction. Now, let this force be in a space such that the direction of the x, y, and z be denoted by i, j, and k, respectively. Then, the magnitude of the components of f being expressed as f sub x sub m, f sub y sub m, and f sub z sub m, let this be this magnitude. If this force has this magnitude along the component of x, and has this magnitude along the direction of y, and along, having this magnitude along the direction of z, then the force f is represented in vectorial form as f equal to f sub x sub i times f sub y sub j times f sub z times k. How do we compute for the unit vector n? In other words, how do we describe the direction of the vector expressed as a unit vector? Let us have this uh, understanding. If we will consider a unit vector n in any arbitrary direction O A as shown in the figure, let us have this figure, let us have this O, and let us have this A. Let us imagine that this OA be described by a unit vector n. The unit direction n from O to A is the pos position vector d divided by the magnitude of the distance from O to A. As such, we say that the direction of OD or OA will be equal to the unit vector d divided by the magnitude of the distance from O to A. If the position vector d has a component equal to x, y, and z in the three mutually perpendicular axis, then this position vector can be expressed as d times x sub i times y sub j times z sub k. Let this be shown. Let us imagine that this is the direction of the component of distance in the x direction, having the magnitude of x and the direction of i. And this be the component of the position vector in the y, having a magnitude of y and directed in j. And this be the magnitude of the component of the position vector along the z-axis, having a magnitude of z and directed through k then this position vector d becomes equal to d times x sub i times y sub j times z sub k. If all this position vector shall be substituted in this formula for the direction of the unit vector, then the unit vector n will become equal to x sub i plus y sub j plus z sub k divided by d sub m. Some simplifying, then we shall have 1 over d sub m multiplied by x of i plus y sub j plus z of k. And that gives you now the description of the unit vector n. To further understand this explanation, let us have this example. A force f having a magnitude of 900 newton passes from A, having a coordinate of 5, 4, and 2, towards B, having a coordinate of 3, 2, and 3. Letter A, express this force as a Cartesian vector, and letter B, express its direction as a unit vector. So let us uh, state all the given in the problem. We are given here the magnitude of the force F, of 900 Newton, the coordinate of point A at 5, 4, and 2, 
and the coordinate of point B at 3, negative 2, and 3. So in this problem, we are required to express the force as a vector or the vectorial location of the force as well as the direction of F expressed as a unit vector. So let us have now our solution. Let us start by solving for the component of the force. And let's start uh, by defining the distance between A and B and that we can do it by solving for the x, y, and the z component of the distance. x shall be equal to the coordinate of x coordinate of b minus x coordinate of a, and that's equal to 3 minus 5. And that gives us a negative 2. Similarly, we can solve for the y value, y component of the distance being the y coordinate of b minus the y coordinate of a that is equal to 4, 2 minus 4 that gives us a negative 2 value for y. And then solving for the z, z is the z coordinate of b minus the z coordinate of a which is equal to 3 minus 2 giving us a value of 1. From these values of x, y, and z, we can compute now for the distance between the two points A and B from the formula that the distance shall be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared gives us the square root of uh, negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 1 squared is equal to 3. After computing for the distance between okay, the two points A and B, then we can compute for the components of the force in the x, in the y, and in the z direction. How are we going to do it? That is by using the definition of the component which we have discussed earlier, which states that the component of the force in the x, the y, and the z direction is proportional to the component of the distance between the points from which the force is directed. As such, f sub x sub m is to x shall be equal to f sub y sub m is to y shall be equal also to f sub z sub m to z and also equal to f sub m to the distance between a and b. Now if x, y, and z plus f sub m and d sub m are all substituted in the formula then we can compute from here the magnitude of x sub x sub m at negative 600, f sub y sub m at negative 600 also, and f sub z sub m at 300. Now after computing for the magnitude of the component of f in the x, in the y, and in the z direction, then we can now express f in vectorial form as okay, the value okay, equal to f equal to negative 600i minus 600j plus 300a. This gives, this gives us now the expression of the vector in uh, the force in vectorial form. How about the direction of f expressed as a unit vector? Let's do it. Let's solve for the direction of f as a unit vector and let us use this definition that we have just taken a while ago. x is already computed to be a 2 negative 2, y at negative 2, and z at negative 1 also. We already have computed for dm, therefore n, or the direction will be equal to negative 2i minus 2j plus k, k divided by 3. I hope that with a short presentation that I have prepared for you, you are able to understand how to represent a vector in vectorial form and to determine the direction of a vector expressed in the form of a unit vector. If you, have a quest if you have some questions about the topic, you may subscribe to this channel and post your comments so that I can answer your questions in my next video presentation. Once again, thank you for watching.